So there's a lot of different techniques to play with. Um, for this assignment, another one real quick is just type on a path. So with the pen tool, if I drag out some paths here and go into my type tool. And if you just hover over any path while you're in the type tool, the type tool icon changes. So it becomes a cursor with a wavy line through it. And then you click on that text and then you can put text on that curve. So something to explore in this assignment too is um, text on a path. So you just got to click on the type tool, click on the text, and then you got this flowing text. So I want to just show you this idea uh, of having type on a curve, but um, radiating out the curve. So there's kind of two ideas to show you here. Um, one is to have type on a curve and expand it. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of trace out the uh, silhouette kind of of his outline a little bit. I'm just using the uh, curvature tool. So I'm kind of quickly just kind of going around. And then use my type on path tool. So I'll go here, type on path. Um, before I do that, let me just find like a famous um, Einstein quote besides E equals MC squared. Um, oh, this is a good one. Imagination is more important than knowledge. So that's a really good Einstein quote. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to apply that. But it's the totally, it's the font is totally wrong for this. So let me get the whole thing in there. So Einstein, you know, you think in terms of like when he was coming up with the theory of relativity and it was the like early 20th century. So you would want to think in terms of what fonts work for that time period. So you can even do a search, um, you know, fonts from the 1920s. So you can go here, just go to images and it'll give you all sorts of examples. So kind of like Art Deco. Um, and then you have modern fonts, modernist like sans serif fonts like Futura and Avant-Garde. Um, So yeah, it's like the Roaring Twenty style jazz age. These are this is like um, that's like a geometric font, even though it says grotesque, it has the perfect circle. Um, so I think um, oh that's a nice font too. This that style is very interesting. Um, this one, this grotesque typeface, that's interesting too. So let me go back now into My fonts and just kind of find something that I feel like fits in with that quote. Maybe even uh, I don't know if any of these really work. Um, So um, let's see. Maybe I'll just use um, Bedoni. 
And I'll talk, and it doesn't really lend itself too well to the curviness of the path. So maybe I just got to find the right spot for it. So, let's see. it's going to get space. So it kind of works a little bit over there. So one of the things you can do is maybe take this type and then use the um, option method of selecting something and duplicating it. Actually, the first thing I would do is um, convert it to outline. So go to object or type. Uh, create outlines and then use your regular selection tool to option click on that to create a duplicate and scale it kind of just radiate it out. So it's just like doing like a radi radiation kind of growth type effect of that. Um, another thing you can do too is with the type tool, add it to a shape. So if you have like a circle like this, and then let me just fill it with nothing. So I'm gonna have no fill. And then again, with something like this, I'll copy it. So I have a backup. So I'm just hitting copy once there. And then when you add type to like a circle like this, and you see logos that have like a circular type on top and circular type on the bottom. Here, I'm gonna use my type tool again. And here I'll just like type out, uh, Relativity. So with the type on the curve tool, you have options. So if you um, see. if you go up into type here, <clears throat> and there's a type on path option, and you can play with these different options. You got skew, so it kind of makes every character straight in relationship to the curve. Um, you got these different options. This ribbon kind of puts it at an angle. This um, stair stepping effect where nothing gets distorted, but everything is straight up and down. And then you can go into um, gravity. I'll just do that one too. So gravity, I think that's almost looks normal. But anyways, if you go to type on path into options, then you have these different options. Um, you know, you can flip it as well. You gotta hit preview to see it. So if you hit flip, then it's flipped. So what flip does, which is kind of cool, it puts it on the bottom part. Um, and then baseline shifts it. So the line that the, the type falls to that line, you have your baseline and you can shift it down by having it follow the ascender or have it go in the center. Um, usually, um, sometimes I have it follow the uh, ascender, so it's inside. And then you hit OK, so it's set. And then with the oops, <clears throat> pipe tool, what you can do, well, actually, then I would take something like this. Um, there is this little like line with the type tool. So actually after you add your type and you go back to your direct selection tool, 
you click on that line and you can move it inside there. And you can flip it as, as well. So you can actually flip it if you want to flip it. It's kind of a pain actually <clears throat> to do, do that sometimes, but you can reposition it with that line. See, I just flipped it just there. It can be a little like wonky, so you got to kind of do it slowly. So you can take something like that and maybe I'll just, and then I have my copy of my circle or you can actually copy this again by just selecting it, Command C and Command F. And then taking the copy find that line, oops. And what I'll do here actually is just go back into type, type of path options, preview, and then flip that, but have it go on the descender. So now it's inside. And then with something like this, and if it's a pain, you can actually just rotate it too. So just rotate it like that. So that's another thing with the type tool where you see this like a logo effect where you have something in a circle, and then you have something inside the circle and the type on the outside. Um, I would change this, I don't know, make a statement. So everything and then I don't know about this, it doesn't really work. But anyways, um, I don't know, I mean, that's just adding type to the circle and manipulating it. And then thinking about what else you can do. So these are just some different techniques you can use. So I kind of got two ideas here that I would probably want to push further. So is there any questions? Um, I, I kind of wanted to just go through a couple different variations of this assignment, just to give you some different ideas. Uh, any questions or thought, no. anything? So, so yeah, so just kind of push it, push it further. I mean, I would do something here now too, where I would play with the type overlapping, um, cutting things out, using the shape builder tool. Um, so I just want to make sure that people have ideas um, to play with this and come up with something. So it's a combination, use the type tool in different ways, but make the type meaningful. You know, the, con the type must represent the historical figure in a meaningful way. You know, so don't use fonts randomly. Think about the history behind the font and how that reinforces the, the history behind the person or the architecture that you're picking for the assignment. So yeah, so that's it. That's all I have to really talk about. Um, Thank you. These techniques. So Professor, yes. I have a question. Okay. Yes, um, I would like to know if I want to save the picture, but uh, when I save uh, save our picture and it will show me the words. Uh, seems like the um, picture outside word, and I have no idea how to cut this word to save the picture. Um, when you what do you mean? So when you save. Your image. Yeah, I want to save the picture, but um, when I save all the picture, 
as if you show me um you show me the picture outside world and i don't want to i don't want to keep the uh oh. Are you saying I have words outside here and you don't want those saved? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if you have your artboard, let's say you were going to print this, only what you see in the white is going to print. Um, same thing. Let's say I wanted to save this now. Like I'm going to save this and I'm going to throw it into Discord so people can see these as, as examples. So when I go to um, file, <coughs> Um, I can save as, and by default, you have your illustrator format. So that's what you'll save it as. If you have it, save it as a PDF. So I'll call it Dracula Einstein. And you save that and you look at that PDF after you save it out of illustrator, it's going to open as a PDF file. And then all that, in, all the information on the outside will not be seen. It's going to be cut off. So now if I go to where I save that, so let me find it. So I go into desktop and there it is, this PDF. I double click on that. And now if you look at this, it actually saved it as two pages, which is kind of cool because, um, well, let's see what it did. Let me double check. So it looks like, um, if I want to save to the other types, so, so it's the same way to save the picture. So if you save it, when you say save picture, what do you mean in terms of? Uh, save the picture for the, the other types. Things yeah. Like uh, the JPG, like that. Yeah, so it'll do the same thing. So like, you see how imagination went over the edge, but here it cut it off automatically. So it, it knew that my artboard went to that point and it didn't include anything that went beyond it. Now, if you save it as a if you go to file and then to save as a JPEG, you have these options here. So you have export for screens, export as, and save for web legacy. And they all kind of work the same way. The easiest one to do is export as, and then it doesn't give you any preview. If you want to save your artboards each individually, you have to click on use artboard. And then um, give it a name. So I'll call it, you know, type portrait. save it to my desktop. And then here it's giving you a little preview and everything that is set here at 72 is fine if it's just going to be something you look on a website or you send in an email, let's say, hit okay. And now when I go to that image here, um, it saved these two, type portrait one, that's my one artboard. And I open that up and there it is right there. It's funny that um, the PDF version did not save the Dracula type that was going up and down. It did not like it for some reason, so it didn't include it, but it did um, include it here. So yeah, if you want to share these, let's say on Discord, you would probably want to save them as a web format, like a JPEG or a PNG. Now, when I go into Discord, if I go into our class here, and I'll go into, I haven't created a folder for this, but if I go into here, this is assignment four, and then I, I can just drop and drag it like this, right into Discord, and upload, and there is the, um, image it one thing that um since this is a png file you see how it's um there's some like transparency almost there's no background there it looks like um 
the white background here actually represents nothing. There's, if you don't have like white in the background, like if I do the Einstein image, you'll see. So I'm gonna throw Einstein up here and throw that into Discord. Well, actually it did, it does have a background. So no, see it doesn't. See, there's no background, it's not white. So one thing you have to remember is if you're going to save these web formats, create a um, big white rectangle. Go to your bottommost layer, even maybe create a layer at the very bottom. And it actually creates it at the top. So I'm gonna drag it all the way down. I think right there is fine. And then go to your rectangle tool and draw out a rectangle. And it has, now it's full with white. And now when I save this, it will have a white background. But the white of the screen really means no image at all. It means transparent and when you save it, there's no pixels there unless you create this white background and put it all the way in the background. And I'll show you this one last method. So of saving these out, if you go to window, there's this um, asset export. So I'll just show you this one last thing. It's good to know these little um, tricks for exporting. So if you go back to file, there's also under export, export a screen for screens, which is somewhat similar to this. So now what you do with this is if you're ready to export, you can grab your image and you can drag it into asset export, but it kind of does two things. If I drag it just like this and drop it, it takes every single piece, every single layered element and separates them as separate assets. And this is something that you would use like for web design purposes. Let's say you have a whole series of logos and icons and you want to use them on a website. That's good because you just drag them and it separates them for what you want, but it's not good for this because you just have one image and you want it to be all one image when you export it. So instead what you do is you hit option as you drag into this and it saves it as one image. And so there it is right there. It's a little tiny, a little hard to see, but once you're ready and I'll do it with Dracula as well. So I'll take the, um, I'll just grab all the, I got to unlock it, I guess some block layers. I'll drag all the Dracula stuff. And then the lock layer. Lock. Okay, there you go. So I'll grab everything here, but you have to hit option and then you drag it out and then it's there. Um, and then when you're ready to export this, there's options down here, but you can pick um, you can pick the two things you want to export. So you actually actually have to click on them and they're highlighted in blue. And then you can add more options. So you can export JPEGs and PNGs at the same time, or even PDFs. And you can change the scale if it's a image format, and then you just hit export. And I'll go to my desktop and hit okay. And now when I go, my desktop here. Let me, oops, let me see where they're at. Um, they should actually do this. They're in this, uh, looks like they're in this folder here. It didn't save, for some reason, it didn't save the. Um, the PNGs, I don't know why, but um, and then here it is, but let me go back real quick. And it should have saved uh, the PNGs too. Uh, you can add some text to the end of the image uh, here. I'm gonna get rid of PDF and I'm gonna hit export one more time. And, oh, I think they, you know what it did? It saved it outside of the folder. So they're there. And 
it's saving it based on these names, asset 10 and 11. So now if I go to desktop, um, and now I'm gonna go back to one of these PNGs, you see it has the background now. So it does have a background now because they added it. Same with Einstein, um, has the background. So just one tip for making sure you have a background there, adding that light. So that's a long answer to your question, but if you just save it, export, pick JPEG, PNG, or PDF, then it'll only export what's on the artboard. Is that good? Yeah, I understand. Thank you. So, yep, you're welcome. All right. Um, is there any more questions about anything? No. No. So, okay. So that's all I have. I mean, um, I think everybody should understand this assignment pretty well then. Um, if you have any questions, just kind of connect with me on Discord and I'm always around. But anyways, it's more of an exploration of type and image together, grayscale, and just try to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some stuff to the unit about typography and more about history, the history of typography and the meaning behind fonts and why fonts were designed a certain way. So when you do research, you can think about the meaning behind the font and you just don't pick any random font. You're starting to think about the right font that works with the right image. So having you really kind of articulate the meaning of what you're designing with the font that you're using. So that's it. So anyways, that's all I have to say. So, all right, have a good night, everybody. And Thank then I'll- Have a good night. So, all right, bye. Thank you. See you later.